man who um, was threatening a Muslim family. Uh, Jay Kanzler, good morning. Welcome back to the show. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. You represent the uh, Muslim family. I do. All right. So, uh, first of all, take us through what happened. Well, last Sunday, a week ago Sunday, uh, this is a family of four, uh, mother, father, four children, all under the age of 11. He's a truck driver. Uh, she's a nurse. Um, currently living in an apartment in South County. We're out looking for uh, a new home. And as they were driving through the, the neighborhood, they were met at a stop sign by Mr. DeBello. Um, the, the wife in this family, they're a Muslim family, uh, wears a hijab, which is just the scarf around the head. Right. And uh, Mr. DeBello said, uh, are you Muslims? And they didn't quite understand him, and and they kind of replied to him. And then he started in with, um, you know, you know, all need to get out of this country. You all need to die. He pulled into his driveway, went inside, got a gun, came back outside, and said, um, "I've got a picture of your car. I'm gonna hunt you down. I'm gonna kill you, you, and your kids." And um, and went on. And this was all based on their religion. Um, of you know practicing Islam, right? So they called the uh, police and said, "Hey, what, what we we're, we're 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 being threatened here." Right? They had called the police after the, he had initially started with the you know you dirty filthy Muslims, you got to get out of the country. Wanted to let the police know that somebody was really harassing them. And they remember they had four kids in the car, and mm -hmm. it was a nice day, and all the windows were open. Right. And so they had just and, and he got out of the car. He went inside opened the door, grabbed a gun, and came back outside. And at that point, they kind of froze. They didn't know what to do, and it continued on. And he said, you know, in this country, we're allowed to have guns so we can shoot people like you. Right. Uh, okay, so that made that made a now national story. It came out last, mm -hmm. last week. Yesterday, uh, Bob McCullough charged them. What was this man charged with? He was charged with unlawful use of a weapon and with an enhancement for a hate crime. And that's the way, as Mr. McCall explained it to uh, myself and some others in the family yesterday, uh, the Missouri hate crime is a, a kind of a, a tricky little statute, but in certain cases, the crime itself is enhanced if it is motivated by hate. And clearly in this instance, everything was about them being Muslims and the use of the weapon was the result of um, you know, th th this man's actions towards them as Muslims, so it's enhanced, it's bumped up from a Class D felony to a Class C felony because of the hate crime. Does this guy have a history of this? What do we know about this guy? You know, shortly after this happened and the family had come to me, um, another family in the neighborhood reached out to me, another Muslim family. This is an area that's probably, this neighborhood is probably a majority Bosnian Muslims anyway. Okay. And another woman came down and, and called me and said, this happened to me. He has done this to me in the past. He has yelled at me and my kids. He has said things about me being a Muslim. And last summer, um, he started chasing me <laughs> in the intersection, uh, threatening to throw a shoe at me. And, and she had gone to the police as well, called the police, and they had come. And, um, and she was you know, distraught, and she was terrified. And unfortunately, um, you know, the, the, the response of the police at that point was, maybe you should find a different route home. Uh, so where, why did it take so long to charge this guy? You know, uh, you get to distinguish the two parts of, uh, of the process. There is the police investigation that took, in my estimation, way too long. There were photographs of this man holding the gun. There were tapes of this man making the threats. And, you know, nobody really did anything in terms of the police investigation until after uh, the family and, and the uh, Muslim organizations held a press conference, and then people started process. And even then, it took too long. By the time Bob McCullough finally got all of the information uh, from the investigation on Monday, his office then moved um, uh, to go ahead and um, charge this man. Nothing. So uh, how is the family doing now? I know you know you're. I'm sure since they're your client, you're a constant contact mm -hmm. with them and they had small kids yeah. so how are the kids handling this you know the, the, it's it's very hard on the kids it was very terrifying remember this is a man who's pointing a gun through the window of the car and making threats and um but you know the family said we're keeping them busy um we're looking forward to giving them the good news the one the 11 year old said um the fathers told them we can't go back to the middle east we can't go back to lebanon right now it's just not safe we'll see your grandmother soon but we can't go back yet. And the 11-year-old daughter said, you know, you keep telling me it's not safe back in Lebanon. 
are we any safer right here? And those are hard questions you to have with an 11 year old. Mm -hmm. These kids were all born in America. They're American kids, American citizens, and they're trying to figure out why would somebody do this. So you didn't, no, nobody lives in a vacuum, and you have to ask the larger question. You have presidential candidates who are saying all sorts of things. You have local people saying all sorts of things. Do you think this is giving people um, the courage or the allowing them to do uh, unsavory and violent things towards minorities like Muslims? Oh, I, I think it absolutely makes a difference. I think you raised two very good points there. The first is that there are certain politicians out there that are almost making racism and bigotry fashionable. I mean, they are promoting it outright. When Donald Trump says, I don't know enough about David Duke and white supremacy um, to immediately, right out of the box, uh, denounce and reject them, that sends a message, okay? This comes from the leaders up above, down. But what it also does for the people like the minority populations, the Muslim population, um, it, it's, it's a sense of fear. And when these things happen and people don't react uh, in, in a way that shows them that they're protected or that they feel equal to all others, it sends a real chill through the community because they think, here at the top, people like Donald Trump are saying it's okay to throw us out of the country. It's okay to bash us. It's okay to um, to say horrible things about us, and nobody's protecting us. So that's why, even if you say, "Well, we worked as fast as we could," you got to understand it's a different world out there right now. Jay, you you are well connected with the Muslim community, the minority community. You've you've been on the show numerous times talking about some of your clients and. Uh, are, are, are there minorities that are being harassed like this client that is not coming forward, that are, that are staying quiet? All the time. You know, all the time. M many of my clients are first generation immigrants from many places, not just Muslims, Hindus, um, you know, Christians, atheists. Um, and, but they don't quite understand the system. And so when this kind of uh, conduct occurs, when this racism, when this bigotry occurs, they're afraid to come forward. Yeah. Um, they're not sure what will be done, and they're afraid if I come forward, if I raise my voice, I just put a bigger target on my back. When are we going to see the video, the pictures, the audio of all this? You know, and, and again, I want to thank uh, Prosecutor McCullough for the meeting with the Muslim community yesterday. Um, all of that becomes evidence at this point. And, and it won't be released. We'll see how the, the case plays out. Um, and, but it will come out, you, you would think, uh, as soon as this case is resolved. Gotcha. All right. So um, he was charged with what now? Unlawful use of a weapon enhanced by a hate crime. And, and the is family. He's in jail. Or? He was in jail. They arrested him yesterday. I have no idea, Kelly, whether uh, he they, posted bond. Yeah, there was a fifteen thousand right, dollars bail gosh, attached to him. Um, and the family's happy with that charge. You know, they're happy, and you know, for the most part, almost you know, uh, entirely pleased with how the process worked. They think it took too long, but again, the father said, "You know what? I have too much faith in this country. I've been here too long. My kids have been all here. I truly believed that this would work out. This is the type of country." where you know when you have equal rights right. and so right now the family's very pleased they're still scared but um it's a much better day than it was yesterday morning jay kanzler attorney for the uh, muslim family that was uh, targeted by the 71 year old man jay thanks for coming in thank you very much 726 big 550 ktr i got an email yesterday from a listener that says 